Welcome back to Trading 360. I'm Diane King Hall. It is time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, and three trades. Ben Lichtenstein will take us through the charts. And here to take us through the trades is Alan Nuckman, Chief Market Strategist, BullseyeOption.com. Great to see both of you. All right, Alan, let's kind of set the stage here before we get into your trades. Talk to us about your feeling about the market following the PCE number that we got this morning. It was in line, especially when you think about core PCE, but still a little higher than what the Fed would like to see. What's your take? Well, our only concern is that the uh, economy is so strong that they can't cut rates sooner as opposed to later. Um, you know, looking at the futures markets, they're telling us it's gonna, that we're going to get something probably, you know, we keep shifting it back to June or July now. But it's the, the rates are coming. We're going to stop raising rates, obviously. And I think the market's gotten comfortable with that. And that's why we've had the rally to all-time highs. It's not just us. It's Japan. It's the stock 600. It's the NASDAQ. It's the, the S&P. It's the Dow. The only major market that hasn't made new highs yet is the, the small caps, the Russell 2000. Uh, but we'll wait to see. And if it does, that'll be a nice confirmation. You're seeing a lot of other stocks catch up. And that's what I wanted to see. All right. A lot of stuff catching up. That's what you want to see. All right. Let's take us through some individual names. Alan, first up, uh, let's talk about your first trade. You've got Anglo Gold on your radar. In the same vein, talking about the fact that I don't think we're going to raise rates anytime soon. At some point, we're going to be cutting rates. That should uh, not allow the dollar to get stronger. And if the dollar doesn't get stronger, then gold can benefit. You can see what happened in uh, some other markets that are unrelated to gold, but they sometimes get looked at at the same time. I'm not going to name uh, names, but uh, you, you can see gold set itself up and get above 2075 for the actual physical gold. Then we can get a run back to those highs. Now, looking at this mining stock is trading it for about, uh, what are we looking at here, 1850 or so. Uh, it's 50% off its 2020 high. What I'm seeing is some leverage buying in it. Uh, we had an October low, but the theme for today is summer in February. Uh, I'm looking at June options as my vehicle. I see the stock is trading sideways between 15 and 20 for six months. A breakout of the range target is 25. We're right here at the 200-day uh, moving average, so we should see a pop to the top of the range. A June 15 call, which is the, the bottom, uh, is trading for about four and a quarter. It's you know it's going to be. Uh, now $3.50 in the money, so our expiration break-even is only $0.75 cents above. All right, Ben, I want to bring you into this, and uh, let's take a look at this chart. What can you tell us about this chart that you're taking a look at, Ben? Yeah, well, Alan mentioned, Diane, 15 to 20. It has been stuck. It's been very much range-bound. It's tested that 19, 20 level a couple times, and I think that as we inch our way back up to it, I'm going to take the opposite side of this one. I think we could be setting up for a potential sell opportunity here. You'll see why when I show you what's going on with that longer-term trend to the downside. But let's just dive into the most recent price activity. Here it is, very much range-bound, right? On the uh, left side of your screen, the highs that we saw in the beginning of February. Uh, down here, the lows down around 16.50. So I just kind of uh, evened it out, 16 to 19, and we've got 17.50 as a bit of a pivot point. This is going to be key in a minute. I'll show you why. But here you can see we're holding above that right now, but still struggling to take out that key resistance up around 19.20. So when in doubt, zoom out. This chart there's not a lot of information here and even more so I noticed look at this earnings provided a bit of a catalyst but we were unable to take out that range that had already been established this month so again let's just step back here you can see as we pull up now a four-hour candle chart a very well-defined trend to the downside this is going all the way back to the beginning of May uh, end of April last year stock was trending up around 30 and Diane look on the way down you can see these areas where it just kind of pauses and regains composure it goes sideways and then breaks out to the downside again Look what's going on here. Basically, since August of last year, I said that 1750 level was significant in terms of the range we've been in since February. But here you can see this goes all the way back to last summer. And then again, I mentioned the upper extreme, this 19, this 20 level. We've tested a few times to kind of right back in that range. That's why I feel like when you reach that upper extreme of this range, 
in a trend environment to the downside, that's where you find that sell opportunity. Rolls back over, take out 1750, open up a door for a retest of these lows that we saw back in uh, uh, last fall here. So for me, it's on a trend to the downside. Alan did mention the 200-day moving average, and here, look, I find that as an area of resistance, if anything, right now. We still have yet to take that out. So RSI is not really participating to the upside to the extent the bulls would like to see. I think we're still in a downtrend here, just testing an upper extreme, Diane. All right, Alan, I got to give you the final word. Well, I like to position for uh, success, and markets that trade sideways, the longer they trade sideways, the more significant the breakout is. So I'm positioning for a bullish breakout here. I've got an in-the-money option. I've got three months of time, uh, and a confirmation will be when it does push above that 20. And the best part is these options uh, will, will produce significant gains from just a modest move in the underlying stock. All right, Alan, let's uh, move on to a, your next trade, CVS Health. Uh, the stock is under some pressure today. It does have an average moderate buy rating. Let's talk about your trade there, Alan. Well, also trading sideways between 65 and 85 for a year. We're right now at the midpoint at 75. So we're about 30% off the, the 2022 top. What I'm seeing here is some leverage buying, some accumulation. I'm seeing money flow into options on this stock. Now, that's smart money because if somebody has a very uh, strong opinion, they're going to benefit the most by using options and being right with that. So the PE on the stock is 11. So it's a discounted stock compared to the rest of the market. I'm looking at a June option, a June 70 call trading for about 675. Uh, again, it's deep in the money. We're trading the stocks at about 75, so it's you know five dollars in the money with some time for development here and uh, a move to the top of the range, a break out of that range targets you know 105. Uh, but uh, right now, I'm just looking forward to get to the back up to the top of the range. And Ben, what are you looking at in the chart for CVS? Well, I was looking at that range as well that Alan identified here. I actually narrowed it down a little bit, 78 to 70 with a midpoint around 74. And we're right at that midpoint. We're struggling at the upper extreme. This is a very similar example here in terms of uh, price activity and some of the structure we're seeing as, uh, uh, as uh, AU, as uh, the last example we looked at. Let's get into what's going on here and uh, join me as we take a look at CVS here. And first and foremost, just again, similar look. Identify the price activity we've seen since the beginning of February. We've got a low established around 70, an upper extreme around 78. Similar situation. Earnings didn't really break us out of this range. And in fact, look where we are. Smack dab in the middle here right now, hanging around around 74. Again, lower extreme, upper extreme, not a lot of conviction. When in doubt, zoom out, and this is where you'll get a little clarity. Taking a look here now at a four-hour candle chart, similar time frame in terms of what we just looked at going back to the beginning of uh, last year, actually. So you can see the stock was trading up around 104. CVS broke down, went sideways around 88, and then again, break down into last spring where we've been sideways since, kind of hovering around 74. Now, this is what Alan was talking about, the upper extreme. What do you say, 80? Uh, five, 65 and 55, I think he was said on this one. But uh, either way right now, again, you can see this range-bound type price activity that's been playing out. But uh, still bearish pattern. Bulls, uh, or bears looking to sell the upper extreme tests that fail. If you get a breakdown through 74, you open up a door for retest of 64. Let's take one more step back. I got another chart to show you uh, where we are pinched in between the 50 to 200-day moving average. Look at this 200, just flatlining and... Unfortunately for the bulls, the RSI is starting to roll over here, which signals, again, that we're starting to see some weakness here, potentially breaking down. Again, take out 74. You open up a door for retest those lows that we saw last fall. All right, let's take a look at uh, your final trade for Allen. That will be MRO. That's Marathon Oil. It's flat, pretty flat today. Yesterday it was weaker kind of compared to its competitors. Uh, take us through this last trade, Allen. Uh, again, it's a stock that's uh, discounted from the overall market. It's down 25% from its 2022 top. I'm seeing the leverage buying. It's got the PE of nine. Uh, it's print trading sideways between 22 and a half and 27 and a half for a year. So the midpoint of that's uh, 25 is about where we stand right now. I'm looking at a 22 call for June, three months of time. The 22 call is trading for about three and a quarter and the break even's a dollar higher on the option. So it's as much the strategy as it is the stock. I love the way that the oil market is setting itself up right now. We could see a uh, crude breakout above 80, and that market has been long forgotten about with uh, the stock market continuing to make 
new all-time highs. So I think there's better risk reward uh, in something like a gold or an oil, like we've talked about two out of my three stocks today. So that's what I'm uh, uh, looking at for this. This has a very positive chart and the PE on this stock is nine, nine. All right, and Ben, take us through the technicals you're watching. Well, I'd agree with Alan on this one, a positive chart. If you're looking at the short term, once you step back a bit here, I'm going to argue again, similar to the other two names, that this one might just be stacking up for a longer term sell opportunity in a trend environment to the downside. Let's begin. First and foremost here with a look at some of the price activity we've seen into recent highs going back to the just few past few weeks. We traded up to 24. We were down around uh, 23. So not a significant move to the upside, but nonetheless, in this instance, was able to identify on this short term look a couple areas of balance that have formed at higher and higher levels. I think in many ways, most notable on this chart, you can see a bit of a double bottom that formed again, uh, just below or right around that 2250, just below 2260 level. Look at this here. Every 50 cents increments, uh, we see new areas of value forming at higher and higher levels. It's not uncommon to see that in a very predictable fashion. So a bullish pattern here, Diana, on uh, this hourly candle chart here. Now, let's take a step back here because, again, you can see much like the other two examples we looked at, when we add a little time on a four-hour candle chart going back to the fall of last year, migration of value to the downside. Interestingly enough, in this instance, we're talking at a $2 increment levels. The market has just stalled out here more recently into uh, it looks like this 23 range, retesting 2450, possibly stalling out here. Are we rolling back over? If so, take out 23 and you open up a door for a retest of that lower extreme. This is just because within this range, when the market's kind of random, establishing area value, it's just overlapping horizontal and rotational. So you work your way to the upper extreme, you fail, you come back down, test the lower extreme, but we are in a trend lower. So we're giving the benefit of the doubt to the bears in this instance and favoring short-sided trades here if you want to participate in the trend. Let's step back. Similar as the other two names we looked at, kind of pinched here between the 50 to the 200, not really providing a lot of enthusiasm, but the RSI is signaling that short-term bullishness that we identified. It's just within this longer-term weakness, this longer-term trend to the downside. So the way I see it, very similar to the other two examples. Yeah, it's stacking up here and inching its way higher, but it looks to me like providing opportunity to participate in that long-term short side uh, trend that's playing out. All right, uh, Ben, I'm going to yield the floor back to Alan. The final thoughts, Alan. Well, being a bull, I'm always looking for buys. I'm looking for buys that are going to break out. And if we go and we look in the Wayback Machine a couple weeks ago, we did uh, AI. Uh, and AI was a stock that traded sideways. So if you want to pull up that chart, Ben, real quick, that's an example of something you and I both agree. The longer something trades sideways, the more significant the breakout is on the upside. And that's what we've seen today where the stocks jumped 20% when the chart didn't look great. But we use in the, or I use in the money options to be in position. So when a chart does have that performance, that you could benefit bigly. <laughs> bigly. <laughs> What a word. All right, we'll have to put a pin in our conversation there. We found more agreement than disagreement. Alan Nuckman, Chief Market Strategist, BullseyeOption.com. And Ben Lichtenstein, host of Futures here on Schwab Network. Thank you both. Coming up next, we're going to spotlight earnings from Salesforce and Snowflake. Caleb Silver joins me next to break down both of those reports. That's coming up here on Trading 360. I was born on the south side of Chicago. It has been a long road, but now I'm working for Schwab. I love to help people understand the world through their lens and invest accordingly. You can call us Christmas Eve at four o'clock in the morning. We're gonna always make sure that you have all of the financial tools 